Okay, welcome to a macroeconomics video. And I've been asked to say a few things about underemployment with particular reference to the UK labour market. This is actually an incredibly important concept. And whilst most textbooks in the past have focused on unemployment, increasingly economists are now thinking about underemployment as a particular labour market issue. Especially with the rise of the so-called gig economy. So here's the data on unemployment in the UK. We can see that the official rate of unemployment in the UK has fallen quite sharply since 2012. Indeed, the latest figures have the official rate of unemployment at just 4.3% of all workers in the labour force. That's just under 1.5 million people. And this is you know, a rate of unemployment we haven't seen since the mid-1970s, certainly over 40 years ago. Some people are suggesting, in fact, the UK could get close to a state of full employment, uh, variously defined to be somewhere between 3 and 4% out of work. Now, falling unemployment is good news. More people are in work than ever before. Um, but there is, a, there is a cloud to this silver lining, and that is the issue of underemployment. Because the latest evidence, according to the Office of National Statistics, and we'll look at the chart in a second, is that the percentage of workers, number of people who want more hours or who have a part-time job and actually want a better um, job is actually probably, certainly as high as perhaps nearly double the official unemployment rate. The best definition of underemployment is when people are willing to supply more hours of work, more hours of their time at work than their employers are prepared to offer. So unemployment Underemployment so it occurs when people are, are counted as looking for either an extra job or searching actively in the labour market for a new job with uh, offering longer hours to replace their current main job. In other words, they want to work longer hours in their, in their current employment. The key point from an exam point of view is that underemployment can be going up even though unemployment officially is falling and that is what's, what's what we have seen in the UK over the last 10-15 years or so. Now many people think that the, the gig economy is the new face of underemployment in the UK and uh, here's an article from The Guardian it's a few months uh, ago uh, which claimed that 50% of people working in the gig economy for the likes of Uber, Deliveroo and others are under the age of 35. So the majority of people working in the gig economy are in um, in the gig in um, are under the age of 35. There's a new phrase that's come out, which is the precariat, the precariat, and that's people who are in jobs that are precarious. Oftentimes they have a, a temporary contract. The hours are uncertain. You would have come across the idea of the zero hours economy. They may not necessarily have the same employment rights and protection that people in full-time work get. And they often don't pay particularly high wages. Huge debate about whether uh, people working for the likes of Deliveroo and Uber are getting paid at or below or just above possibly the minimum wage and certainly below the living wage. So we hear about the rise of the working poor. People who are working, often working long hours but not taking home much money at the end of the week and uh, remain, in fact, uh, dependent on some top-up benefits from the state. The Taylor Report came out in 2017. This was a report entitled Good Work, the Taylor Review of Modern Work Practices, headed by Matthew Taylor from the RSA. And uh, they, they argued that despite the overall strong levels of employment, they found that there was evidence of persistent underemployment in the UK economy. And measures of underemployment which account for workers who want those extra hours, for example, are higher than they were during the recent recession, despite, as we'll see in a second, some improvements in the last few years. One of their charts was the fall in the percentage of people in work who have a full-time job. This chart is taken from the Taylor Report. But notice the rather skewed nature of the y-axis here. Yes, there has been a reduction in the percentage of people who have a full-time job from just under two-thirds in 2008 are now down to about 63%. The rise of self-employment, the rise of part-time work, of course, is partly to do with that. So how do we measure underemployment? 
This chart is taken from the OLS and I think provides a useful handy little flow chart to take us to a figure, which is that of the 32 million plus people in work, around 10, 11% actually want more hours. Look there at the, at the sort of pinky, orangey segment of this, of this flow chart. So first of all, to be counted as underemployed, underemployed, you have to be looking for a new job with longer hours to replace your main job, or you want to work longer hours in your current job. You have to be able to start in two weeks. You have to have uh, a weekly hours worked of less than 40. That's for people aged under 18 or 48 or less for people aged 18 and over. So you have to have hours below the threshold and then we break that down into people in the current job, in a different job, in an additional job. So just over 2 million people, here's the key point to take away, just over 2 million people have a job, have a job, uh, but they want to work more hours. And this job is the estimated level of underemployment. And essentially underemployment is when people, people's jobs, they don't use all their skills or education or their ability to work. In a sense, they're not being fully utilized in the labor market. The rise of zero hours, all that kind of stuff, the rise of part-time work is, is part and parcel of this discussion. The evidence from the government is that as we speak, the level of underemployment in the UK is just over 2.5 million people. Now that is nearly, not quite, but nearly twice as many underemployed workers as unemployed workers. And that underemployment has come down since 2013, as you can see, but it's significantly higher than it was in 2002, while unemployment, as we saw in the first chart, has declined. And there's a wider debate here, I think, about, about the types of jobs that people are getting. I've, I've used this chart in previous presentations. It's based on research of the, um, the skew of employment in the UK increasingly towards jobs that offer relatively, actually often very low pay. Uh, so to follow the purple line here, the index of employment in very low paid jobs offering less than 70% of the average earnings, which is in the UK is about 28%, the £28,000 a year has gone up significantly by about 30%. Employment in other low paid sectors has gone up by about 25% compared to employment generally, of course, which is uh, getting on for 10% higher than it was in 2000. So underemployment, underemployment is a key term to have in your notes. And I would venture to suggest it's a great concept to use in your evaluation when you get a question on unemployment in the labor market and more generally, the economics, the benefits and the costs of the rise of the gig economy. There are over two and a half pe million people in the UK underemployed, we're not making full use of their time, their skills, their ability and their experience. Okay, thanks for joining me on this uh, video looking at underemployment in the UK.